So about a year and a half ago, I got this app on my phone called Day Count, and it's an app that counts down to a particular event. And so according to this app, we are four days, 19 hours, 49 minutes, and 55 seconds away from the launch of our church. However, that's no longer the case thanks to the coronavirus. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode on this channel. This is a new episode in a series that I'm calling Birth of a New Church, where we're tracking the process of, of launching a church that I'm engaged in, in church planting. Before I launch into this video, let me say two things. One, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell next to it so you can be notified when I'm posting a new video. We are so close to 2,000 subscribers, you might be number 2,000. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Then also, if you didn't see the last video that I posted on this channel, uh, our worship leader, his name's Nick Budo, he's gonna be in this series coming up pretty soon. He's the worship leader at our church plant and he wrote a song uh, called Psalm 91, The Almighty God, and it is absolutely amazing. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you listen to that song. Here's a sneak peek of it. Lord, you bring us to our knees. All right, that's all you get. That's all you get right now. But you definitely want to jump on over and listen to that song as well. So, like I said, this is a series called Birth of a New Church. This is not the video that I planned on making. Uh, I actually planned on releasing several videos before today, but uh, things have changed, which is kind of the theme of church planting, not in this way. I mean, this is different than normal, but if I had to put a tagline to church planting, it would be things have changed because uh, that's kind of how church planting works. But I don't really need to get into the detail of what's going on. Unless you live under a rock, like in reality, then you know exactly what's going on with the coronavirus. COVID-19, uh, everything's shutting down, the whole world is shutting down, and as a result, our church plant launch has been postponed. You know, my goal was to kind of go back in time and kind of work up to where we are uh, today with planting the church, and I know it's going to go past the launch date, um, and I still want to do that, but I want to make this video right now because this is so timely. We're literally living in the moment of this uh, that I think it's important to get this video out. A couple weeks ago, I was talking to one of the guys on our launch team, and he was like, you know, maybe we should start thinking about the coronavirus and what that means for our launch. And and I listened to him, but I was kind of in the back of my mind thinking, oh, you know, no way that's going to affect the launch. I mean, we might have fewer people there than normal, but but like the launch is still going to go on. However, just to kind of walk through the timeline of how this happened, not last Wednesday, but the Wednesday before that, I believe, is when I got a call from the business administrator at the building that we were meeting in and he's like hey i hate to say this but uh, unfortunately we're shutting down the school to all outside groups uh, little did we know at that time that that wasn't just going to be us but like the whole world would be shutting down and the schools would be shutting down i live in ohio we're planting this church in ohio and the governor uh first issued like no groups over 100 should be meeting. But then just a couple days ago, the governor issued a, a stay at home or shelter at home order, which means like, even if we were gonna meet in little small groups, we shouldn't be doing that. And so obviously again, I don't need to get into all the details. You guys know what's going on, but I just wanted to make this video just kind of to talk about how we're handling that. And also talk about how we're trying to still be a light in the darkness. Uh, in this in this time. So, so first of all, this was completely unexpected. We didn't know that this was going to get to the scale that it did. At least I didn't know. I'm sure some of you are watching this like, I tried to tell people. Well, good for you. I didn't know. Actually, I was going to make a video just like this, like a couple days after I found out our launch was getting pushed back. And I was going to kind of start by, by joking and maybe even wearing a mask. And that would have been in very poor taste looking back. So thank you, Lord, for not letting me go through with that idea. But if you're like me, you didn't know that this was going to get to the scale that it did where, where churches were even shutting their doors. So we've decided to shift everything into a, a digital form of online ministry. Now, when that first happened, of course I was disappointed, right? I mean, we we're so close to the launch. I was really wanting, especially in a time like this, to, to be able to meet with our launch team. We've been growing, as you'll see as more videos come out, you know, we've been growing closer together as a launch team. And so I was really excited about that, but at the same time, I love doing what I'm doing now, and so I love digital ministry, and I was like, this is actually kind of amazing. We can kind of shift into this period of digital ministry and maybe kind of have some sort of house church model going on as we build towards launching when we're all together. If you know Joseph Solomon, he's a YouTuber on here. He put out a video last week or a couple weeks ago kind of about house churches, and I was like, 
What if for our church plant, we could have this phase, the, a few months where we're in house churches and, and meeting together that way and, and growing in community and then, but still ramping up to this launch. And who knows, that still might happen. But however, since the governor has kind of put a, a hold on all gatherings, no matter what the size, well, then we can't even really gather together as house churches if we're gonna uh, really try and listen and, and love our neighbors the way that the governor is asking us to. Side note, I saw a tweet and I thought it was so interesting that said, isn't it interesting how our culture has gone from this you do you society where all you care about is yourself to actually now it's love your neighbor? I don't know, it's interesting that our society has made that shift. But anyway, so because of the, the decree that the governor has laid out on the land, uh, yes, I made that sound way more dramatic than it actually is, kind of, because of that decree to shelter at home, we can't even gather together in, in groups physically or in, in house churches. I mean, we could still gather digitally in Zoom meetings or something like that, but, but not the way that I was originally anticipating. And so, yeah, of course that was disappointing, um, but where are we right now? Currently, we're in a position of, of just prayer and pause and seeking after him, which honestly isn't that bad. Uh, I was reading in the book of Haggai, not too long ago and, and in Haggai and they're they're rebuilding the temple and and in the, the end of chapter 1 I think it's verse 12 it's really interesting because the people you see this interesting order of progression where first the people obey the Lord and then they fear the Lord and then and then they get this comforting uh, message from the Lord that he says I am with you and then they get to work on building the temple and not to put not to completely uh, put ourselves in those shoes but it's almost the same for us like what if we need this period of just just trusting and listening to the Lord's message of the fact that he is with us before we get to work on, on building this church plant that's something that I've been thinking about and I might make another video like unrelated to the church plant just about what this period can mean for pause and reflection and almost uh, yes we're mourning with the severity of this but at the same time this is almost sort of a forced Sabbath on people to take a rest and take a break. And so maybe that's another video, but all that to say, where are we right now in the church plant? We're in that position of just waiting to hear from the Lord and just waiting and trusting that he is with us in this time. Even in the midst of this, we are trying to be intentional about outreach. And so it's so amazing to see our launch team, even though we're not physically together, we have people that, that are engaging in different ways of community outreach. We had one couple on our launch team that raised almost a thousand dollars worth of food and supplies to go to a local public school to provide lunches for those who don't have lunches anymore. We have another guy on our team who, who's come up with a website that people can log on to and if they need help getting groceries or even if they just want to talk to someone, they fill out something on the website and they can contact us and we can uh, just call and talk. We can deliver groceries to their porch. Like even in the midst of all this, there's still ways that we want to try and be a blessing to this community. So all that to say, Say we're in a period of waiting, but we're also in a period of, of trying to help those who need help the most right now. And I think that to, to bring it full circle, ultimately, that's what every church plant should be doing, even if it's not in times of difficulty like this, right? We shouldn't just be running off on our own, trying to trying to figure out how to do it on our own. But no, we listen, we seek the Lord's guidance, and then we move. And then at the same time, uh, we're also trying to meet the needs of the people in our community. It's not either or. Those two don't compete against each other, but learning to walk in the tension of both of those together, I think is is part of what it means to be a church planter. And not just church plants, but but churches in general. Last Sunday, I started a series through the book of Daniel for our launch team. And so the plan was for each week for that to be available online. I only got through chapter one uh, before the governor issued this decree of staying at home. And so uh, I don't know what that means for the continuation of that series, even though we only got through chapter one. Uh, but I wanted to end this video by sharing a clip uh, just just a couple minutes from the message that I preached this past Sunday. But before I go into that, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you go and listen to our worship leader, Nick Buto's song. It's amazing. It's just full of encouragement. So make sure you definitely do that. But here's the video from this week. See, I want us to be reminded that the, the same God that controls nations is the same God who controls people and miracles. And he's the same God that's with us in our worst moments. He's with us in our moments of uncertainty. He's with us in our failures. And not only is he with us in them, but, but they're not out of his control. See, sometimes I think that we think of God and the enemy as equals on opposite teams and they're battling it out and we, and we, and we hope and pray that God will win. 
And sometimes he does, and we believe that in the end he will, but, but sometimes the enemy wins, and we think if we pray harder and, and pray enough, then God won't let things get too out of control. But no, that's not how it works. None of that is true. The truth of the matter is that, that whether we can see the big picture or not, God is working behind the scenes to accomplish his purposes. I don't know why something like this virus is here, but I know that God does. And I know that it didn't catch him by surprise. And, and, and to go even further, not only did it not catch him by surprise, but I know that he either, either caused it or allowed it to happen. I don't know why our church plant launch had to get pushed back, but I know that God does. I don't know if everyone in my biological family or if everyone in our church family is gonna make it through this pandemic. I wish I could say that if you're part of our launch team or if you're listening to this message, then you'll be fine, but that's not true. The truth is, I don't know, but God does. And that truth, the truth that we know nothing, but God knows everything, that, that's the only truth that can give us hope and peace in the midst of uncertainty. Jerry Bridges says it like this, that which should distinguish the suffering of believers from unbelievers is the confidence that our suffering is under the control of an all powerful and all loving God. Our suffering has meaning and purpose in God's eternal plan and he brings or allows to come into our lives only that which is for his glory and for our good. Mm -hmm.